Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It is so good to be here. And if you are joining me live in our Facebook community or you're joining me on IGTV, please stop by and say hello. I love to chat with people. It is now February and I would love to hear from you one thing that you're really looking forward to in February. For me, I am getting to go to a wedding this February. I'm so looking forward to it. So looking forward to connecting with friends that I haven't seen in such a long time. It's going to be awesome. Good morning, Julian Jones. Man, you just have the most fun name to say out loud. Julian Jones. <laughs> um, and so today, um, if you are new to me and new to what, what I do, I'm a brand and business coach. I help women in the online space learn how to create a brand that captivates and converts. So it's that branding and that business piece that is so important because if you can't make an income and you can't make an impact, then what's the point of even doing all this work online? Yes, I do get to see Julian Jones on Thursday. We get to connect um, live, like in real life, which is always super fun. So I'm also looking forward to that too, Julie. Um, today, we're talking about how to captivate with consistency and specifically six ways you can do that starting today. And so I just want to jump right into this stuff because your time is valuable. So is mine. So let's get to it. The first way that you're going to start captivating people to either get on your list or opt into your offers is to just commit to being visible consistently. And I know that a lot of us have lives that are already very full and we're thinking about starting a business or starting a blog and maybe converting it to a business down the road. But the first step really is just a mental commitment of like, I'm doing this, I'm making it happen and I'm writing it down. I'm going to be consistent once a month, once a week or every day. It could even be once a quarter. If that's all that you can manage for something, that's okay. And l instead of waffling and expending a lot of energy saying like, oh, it's not enough, or I should be doing more. I know I need to be more visible on this platform or that platform. Giving yourself permission to start where you're at and then build on that is right exactly where you need to start. Okay. And so committing and saying, you know what? I can only write one blog a month. I know that I have got one gal in the community who said, I've got kids. I can only write one blog a month and that's it. And maybe I'll get visible with that one blog. And I said, that's perfect. And you know what? She's got hundreds of people commenting on her blogs. It's amazing. And she's moving slow. She's moving at the right place. And she's totally meeting her clients and her readers right where they're at. It's perfect. It doesn't have to be this overwhelming strategy, guys. Keep it simple. Keep it super simple. Kiss. It's the kiss principle. Keep it super simple, like almost like stupidly simple and, and just start there. Okay. So step one, commit. Number two, brand boards. So a lot of things that I see online that just, I know immediately deteriorates um, someone's expertise and their authority is changing out their visuals constantly. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, if something's not appealing to your audience, like not to tweak it, do tweak it, but completely changing out your color scheme, completely changing out your fonts, completely changing out the style of maybe your headshots or your photos. Um, that's really going to throw people for a loop. And so what I encourage people with, if they can't afford to work with someone like me, who's a designer or a brand specialist, you know, pick colors, and pick clean fonts that you can be consistent with. Google fonts are free. Um, start there and be consistent so that when people recognize that color pink or that color teal or that color orange, they know, oh my gosh, stop the scroll. I need to read what this person is saying because I like what they have to say. And it might feel like you're blending in too much by being a little too neutral, but you can always build on colors and fonts that are simple. You can always add a script to that very clean font that you've been using for some time, right? And then you can develop your brand images that go along with that. And you can develop even more assets along the way. But being consistent um, with something as simple as your colors, one or two colors, three tops, um, and, and consistent fonts that are free on Google. I mean, even in the design world, Helvetica is the most used font by brands, Helvetica, and it's free. It like, comes with Microsoft Word and Pages. You don't have to get super fancy in order to stand out and make money, okay? So one was commit, two was brand boards, three, pursue excellence and not perfection. 
right? And I know you guys have heard me say this, I'm not beating a dead horse, but we have to hear this truth multiple times before we start to like really buy into it. You cannot move a parked car, right? You have to get the car moving before you can turn it. And, and so I wanna jump back to the example of brand visuals, right? I had a very light blue and kind of a darker blue, and I was running Facebook ads for a little bit, and they were really blending in. They weren't converting well, and it wasn't until I used a pop of color, I like yellow, I'm wearing it today, um, that people started to notice my ads and they started converting better. And I said, you know what? I've got to add one more color that's going to pop, that's going to be eye-catching. I didn't overhaul my brand. I just started infusing little pops of yellow, little pops of yellow, yellow buttons, yellow lines, yellow shapes that kind of, you know, will catch your eye and won't blend into the platform as much. And it's little things like this that it's okay to tweak. But I couldn't know that until I just got out there and started getting visible with my brand. And so pursue excellence. I really, I struggle a little bit personally with the phrase that says, um, done, done is better than perfect. And, and to me, that has this connotation of like, I'm just haphazardly doing this and just getting it out there, I think we should always pursue excellence. We should always give our best. And so I say pursue excellence, get it done, but don't be a perfectionist about it, right? So just start moving. If you need to pivot and you're like, hey, I'm hearing crickets, that's a clue. That's a good thing. You know this doesn't work and you can scratch it off your list. Tried that, didn't work. Let me pivot, not overhaul, but just turn and let me try something in the similar vein, but just a little to the left. Okay. And so we're pursuing excellence, not perfection. Number three, um, get into routines. I know we talked about this a lot in renew, which is our mindset workshop. If you are just joining us and you didn't hear about it, you can still sign up for it. It's free. Um, I will drop the link below in the comments. Um, and so we talked about getting into routines so that we can eliminate all the extra stuff going on in our head and we know what to expect for our morning, right? And I'm going to get up. I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to read my affirmations, which are on the wall. Which way am I pointing? This way. So I'm going to read the affirmations on my wall. I'm going to drink my tea. I'm going to have my quiet time. I'm going to review my notes that I wrote down in my work shutdown routine about what I need to do today. If anything has changed, if I've gotten any new emails, I'm going to make tweaks and adjustments. But my routine basically sets the pace for my day. And I'm not hairy scary in the morning. I'm not freaking out. I'm not wasting an hour trying to figure out what I need to do. I have simplified my life by taking a lot of the guesswork and questioning and waffling time out. And now I've just opened my day up even more. And so that allows me to be consistent because I, know, I don't have to try and figure it out. Um, so talking about routines, rituals, we talked about four different types. Um, it is a morning ritual, a workday startup ritual, a workday shutdown ritual, and a nighttime routine or ritual, whatever you want to call it. If you don't like the word ritual, call it a routine or system, um, plan, whatever works for you. But I talked about four specific ones that we can implement immediately into our lives and our schedules that actually, it's not more work, it actually simplifies our work. So having routines allows us to be more consistent in what we're doing. And that says, hey, this person kind of has it together. Like they know what they're doing. They've done this before. And when we start to build that routineness into our business, man, that ups your expertise uh, appearance like by well. Like it's crazy. People don't tend to trust people who seem to be kind of like flying by the seat of their pants. They trust people who say, this is our workflow. This is how I'm gonna walk you through the branding process. This is how I'm gonna walk you through the sales process. This is how I'm gonna walk you through how to create a webinar. This is how I'm gonna walk you through X, Y, and Z, right? This is how we lose weight. The systems, routines, formulas, there's they're stuff that people can grasp and it's really, really beneficial to put these things in your business and not just in your business, in your personal life so that you can free up creative mental space in your business. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, drop a yes. Let me know if you're getting it because this, these are little things, super simple things that we can implement today and it will transform how people perceive us online and in real life. Um, 
and we're going to start captivating them with our consistency. Okay, number one was commit, number two was brand boards, number three was pursuing excellence, not perfection, number four was routines, number five, invest in support where you need it in order to be consistent. One of the best things that I did um, in the very beginning of my business was I invested in a book called Strengths Finders 2.0. And you know what that allowed me to do? It allowed me to consistently lean into my strengths with confidence so that I wasn't constantly looking at, could this be a good fit? Maybe this is a good fit. Maybe I should pursue this thing over here. I started simply being consistent in what I wanted. I figured it out and I was consistent. I was like, I want an online business. I want to make courses. I want to coach people. This is what I'm good at. This is what I want to do. And I started being consistent with that one thing. And then, then maybe the next step is investing in a course. Maybe you're not ready to invest in coaching or maybe you're not ready to invest in working with a designer. That's okay. You have to make small steps forward in the beginning. And maybe that looks like investing in a course that helps you map out your content. I have one of those for, for sale on my website called Map Your Content. And it gives you a system to follow consistently. So you, when you map out your content, you're not talking about things all over the map. And then Google SEO starts working in your favor and you always have a plan. You're never feeling lost or feeling like you don't know what to say to people. Like investing in something that's going to give you the support you need to get to that next level and give you something that someone's already figured out for you. Man, if it's 97 bucks, throw your card down and buy that bad Larry because that's going to save you $97 worth of time spent spinning your wheels, right? So invest in the support that you need. If it's a VA, and getting some little things off of your plate that are not in your area of strength, go for it. If it's just one hour a week or five hours a week, go for it. It's going to make a difference in your business. Maybe it looks like hiring a babysitter once every two weeks. So you can have a morning where you're like wrapping your head back around your business, making sure that all of your actions for the month are aligned or for the next two weeks are aligned. It makes sense. They're driving towards this goal and not leaving you someplace you don't want to be and leaving you feeling like you're spinning your wheels and not getting anywhere, right? That four hour window where you hire a babysitter to just come so you can lock yourself in a room or maybe you go to a hotel and lock yourself away there for the morning, like that's okay. You can do those small investments in yourself and in your business and it really is gonna have returns on investment, both emotionally, physically, mentally, these things will help you and it doesn't have to be a huge investment. Um, and so that was number five, invest in yourself. Number six, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Being consistent means you show up even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't feel like you've got it all together. Um, part of entrepreneurship is constantly being in a learning curve. Um, the, the economy is always changing. Your industry might be always changing. Technology for sure is always changing. Can we talk about Facebook's algorithm and Instagram's algorithm? Golly, that stuff is changing all the time and we've gotta be able to pivot and shift and be like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this now? Because this was my routine and system that I got really comfortable in and that was a good thing, but now I need to tweak it. So getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, showing up when you don't even feel like it. Um, maybe it's like, you know what? I wanted to get my workout in this morning. I'm going to do a Facebook Live, still sweaty, still in my workout clothes, but I'm going to get visible with this inspiration that I feel like my audience needs to hear today. Just commit to being consistent in what you're doing. And so if that's committing once a week to showing up on Instagram with a post, do it. Um, there's all kinds of schedulers too for free that will help you with consistency. There's all kinds of tools, all kinds of apps that will help you to do that. But some of this is mindset stuff like committing and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And some of it is like very practical, systematic, strategic, like building a routine for your morning or building in a routine for your evening. Maybe it's you lay out your clothes at night so that in the morning you can get ready quicker and you have more of your morning when you're most productive, right? There's these little things that you can do to help you captivate people in your business consistently. And the more you can do that, the more trust you're going to build with your audience, the more likely they are to buy from you or even to opt into your free offers. And that's going to transform your business. It's not just going to captivate, it's going to start converting. So let me know if that makes sense. 
Also, I'd love to hear from you. Have you invested in some kind of support? Have you invested in a book? Have you invested in a course? What was it? I always want to hear about good things um, that people have done that have really been beneficial. Like share the good stuff, right? Put that, promote that stuff to the top and let the, what is it called? Like um, the cream of the crop, right? So we want what's best to be seen, be heard, to be visible. So let me know what it is that you've used that has been really beneficial. Share with your community here um, because we want to benefit from that too. Okay. And so lastly, um, I want to share with you an opportunity. Now it's not available on my website, but I want to let you know, I still do intensives um, in my business. And so an intensive is just a 45 minute session with me. Um, normally I only offer my bigger package. I do have a one day full book out intensive. But today, I just want to invite you to take me up on a breakthrough intensive. Maybe you need some help with your brain board. Maybe you need some help getting clarity in a routine that's going to make sense for your business. Maybe it's working through client workflows, but you need breakthrough in a specific area of your business around your brand or your website or how to convert with your opt-in. Um, maybe you're just really kind of struggling with like, how do I make this happen? Does this sound like a good strategy if I can only commit to one blog a month? How do I capitalize on that? And we can talk about a plan and a strategy and man, 45 minutes is powerful. And sometimes that's all you need to get you to the next level is just this little breakthrough. If I could just break through and just start captivating in this one area, man, I know my sales would grow up or I know my list growth would just pew, be exponential, right? So I'm gonna drop the link below in that I have a couple spaces open in my calendar for February for a 45 minute intensive, $97. So I want you to take that, take me up on that um, because it's not something that I offer on my website. It's not easy to access and I will delete this video eventually so that the link disappears. So this is gonna be available through the end of the week um, and there's only a couple slots in February for this. So please take me up on this. Please get that breakthrough. Please make that small investment in yourself and your business. It is totally worth it. All right, six ways to captivate with consistency, start putting some of these into action today. And I'm super excited. If you have any questions about some of these things, let me know. And I will see you guys here next week in the community. Bye guys.